Isaiah chapter 40, very familiar piece of scripture this morning, uh, verse 28. The Bible says this, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he faints not, neither is he weary. There is no searching for his understanding. He gives power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. He says this, he said, even the youth, those strong boys that you see that are out here playing football, basketball, he said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But then he says, but they that wait upon the Lord. <laughs> I love that scripture. Hallelujah. But they that wait upon the Lord. He says that the young men may fall, the young women may fall, this world may fall, but they that wait upon the Lord, amen, shall be renewed. He said, they shall, he shall renew your strength this morning. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord. Somebody say that. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord the Lord. Amen. And then we see over Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3. Amen. Verse 14. The Bible says unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write, these things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The Lord says this morning, I know your works. Hallelujah. The Lord says this morning to you, Crossroads, I know who you are. I know your works. He said to the Laodicean church, I know your works, that thou art neither hot or cold, but I would that thou were cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Can you just pray with me this morning that the will of God be done, be manifested here today? Father, we just bless your name. God, we thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you, God, for your presence today. Father, I pray, God, that your will shall be done in this place. Father, I pray, God, that, Lord, you prepare our ears to hear, our hearts to receive your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. <clears throat> May I start off this morning by saying that our country, our beloved country, the great United States of America is in desperate need of a spiritual renewal. Yeah. Would, you, would you believe that? Would you, do you believe that? I believe that with all my heart that our country, this, this great land of freedom, this great land of the United States, uh, the country that I love, friend, amen, she's in need of a spiritual renewal, a spiritual awakening. But we have a problem. And the problem, I believe, is that when you, when you, uh, when you uh, consider the last great spiritual awakening or renewal uh, that, 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 is, that, that took place, that was true, that was a, a widespread, world-changing event, it's been a long time. In the middle of the 19th century, if you read your history. So it's safe to say that no one alive today has first-hand knowledge of what it's like, of what it feels, of what it tastes, or how it even begins. And I believe this morning that we are in need of that great spiritual awakening, that great spiritual renewal, friend. I believe even that this culture that we live in is more dangerous than any other culture that previously existed. Not because of the rising drug problems, not because of the great immorality, not because of, of the rebellion that we see or the crime rate we see, but because we are absent of this true spiritual model in the churches today. We have chosen to follow what seems to be best by human standards rather than divine standards. We have become a people who has a belief system that says if I follow my heart... If I follow my 
will. If I do what I feel I need to do, then it shall be well. I talk to ministers all across this great state and, I, and so many times in different denominations. now that I'm getting involved in the One Harvest organization, I talk to them in the Presbyterian, them in the Methodist, them in the Baptist movements. I talk to the Catholic priests. I talk to many, many more. And I hear a philosophy of just follow your heart. Do you know your heart is deceptive? Yeah. I follow the Word of God. Yeah. You follow the Word of God. You can't go wrong. I, I, I do marriage counseling all the time. I hear the sad, I hear the sad thing say, oh, but pastor, my heart says I have to leave. Your heart's a liar! Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The word of God does not lie. The word of God does not lie, friend. They tell me, oh, if I follow my ways, if I, if I do my will, then everything shall be done okay. I used to tell my daddy that growing up. <laughs> I used to say, Daddy, listen, it's all, I'll just do what I feel like in my heart. You know, my dad used to, my dad used to call that stinking thinking. <laughs> he did. He'd say, son, if you follow your ways and you follow your thinking, your thinking's going to change. So that means your standard's going to change. Yes. Now, what you think of me today, you might not think of me tomorrow. I tell people all the time, I'm loving on Sunday and hate it on Monday. <laughs> Some of you might be hating me at about 12 o'clock. <laughs> we, we've allowed our standards, we've allowed uh, our thinking to be changed. And, and because we've engaged in this type of thinking, our standards have declined. The things that used to be considered unmentionable are now the normal. Even on your television sets, I let my children watch uh, Disney Channel and, and sometimes Nickelodeon Channel. And sometimes I look and I are you kidding me? Turn that junk off. Our, sta our standards ha have changed. Uh, what used to be uh, the unmentionable is now the normal. I was watching a, a show the other day that was back in the 60s and the 50s, and it was in black and white, and this lady, she came in, very elegant, but boy, she had a low-cut dress. And, you know, and, 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 and the commentator was say, saying, and they were talking about just a change of centuries and all these, said how that in that time, that was very risque. But now you turn it on and you, I'm ashamed of some of the stuff that you yes, see. Right. Yeah. Ashamed of the things that we see. Uh, uh, friend, listen, what used to be considered the, the unmentionable is now the normal. And tragically, we have failed to see ourselves as God sees us. Yes. Do you know that when you gave your heart to the Lord that you were washed in the blood of Jesus and that he no longer sees your sin, but he sees the blood of his only begotten? See, I believe in order for us to have a spiritual renewal, I believe in for us to have a spiritual awakening, we have to have a desire for change. 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 It's like the beggar that sits on the side of the road, and they're, straight, they're hollering out with a can. They're hollering, change, change, change. <laughs> they're really the one changing their life. They're not just wanting your money. They're wanting change. They don't want them to be the way they are, friend. You've got to understand that renewal involves change, and most people don't care to change. And the sad thing about it is people think they don't need to change. That's true. I met a minister this week. I began to talk to him, and he says, I am who I am. I said, that's a pie pie philosophy. You know, pie pie. He said, I am who I am, Pastor. I, I'm too old to change now. I said, that's not of God. God wants you to change. He wants you to change. He wants you to have a, a, a heart that says, Lord, your will be done. Friend, we need a revival. We need a renewal. And we, we, we need change in our spiritual status. The status quo is no longer pleasing or acceptable by God. This woman right here, hallelujah, your pastor. She's my wife, but she's your pastor, too. She yeah. preached the house that Wednesday night. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you missed it, friend, because she said, she asked a question, and it convicted me. I went home convicted. <laughs> and she said this. She said, the Lord spoke to her, and I believe he spoke to you. And, and when I heard that word, it changed my life because the question was, is your life pleasing to God? Right. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I said, Lord, I want to be pleasing to you. I don't care what anyone else thinks about me. I want to be pleasing to you. I don't care what, what she or my children or anyone else thinks. I want to be pleasing to you. Change me. Change me. In, in order for us to want change, it's got to start right here, friend. And I'm telling you right now, not my will, but the Lord's will be done. Many times we don't want change. Uh, uh, the Hebrew writer said that he who started the work in you, amen, said that that work is well-pleasing. Uh, but he, he also talked about, have you completed that work? See, what God started in you is, is pleasing to him. It's pleasing. But how are you living your life now? Is it pleasing? Many times we don't want to complete things because we lose sight of them. We lose strength. We lose our vision. We lose interest. And we need renewal. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. That's good preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how good preaching. <laughs> I know I got the amen corner right here. Yeah. Hallelujah. We need renewal. If you want your spiritual status to change in your life, you need to understand, friend, amen, that Jesus wants more out of you and more for you. He doesn't want you just to sit back and, and be a pew warmer. He wants you to go forth in the name of the Lord, friend. And he wants, listen, uh, we can look at the, the church of the Laodicean age here. And I personally believe that we are living in the Laodicean age. And our problem is a lot like the Laodiceans. They have a tendency to view their lives through the standards of today's culture. Now, I'm guilty as charged. Melissa says sometimes I have a, a way of being too transparent. <laughs> and I'm guilty. I'm guilty as charged. Because as I get more and more into our denomination, and, and, and when, I, when, I, when I took and, and I became a bishop in the church of God, they want you to take on a little more responsibility. And they, they want to stretch you in many different ways. And they want you to do this and do that and, and go here and go there. And then they begin to talk about how to do this for your church and that for your church. And then how they, they talk about, you know, the, uh, how they, we compare our church to other churches and this and that and the other. And I begin to think about all of these things. And I said, Lord, I don't care. I just want you to be pleased with me. I just want you to be pleased with me. I don't want to measure our church to another church. I don't want to measure our congregation to another congregation. I don't want to measure my life to the world's life, but I want to measure my life to the life of Jesus. Of Jesus. made away. Our problem is a lot like the Laodicean church. We have a tendency to view our lives through the standards of today's culture. We measure our standards by what's going on around us. We don't realize that there's a problem so many times because we look at other people and we say, I'm better off than that person. Friend, this is huge in this culture. This is huge in our country. And this is huge even in the church world today. And then to, in, in order to unlock the problem, we need to be number one, clear of about our God. <laughs> you need to be clear about who you call master. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be clear about who you call Abba Father. Yeah. You need to be clear. To be clear, friend, uh, this could be one of the most tragic issues of the modern day church. Many people are unclear about their beliefs in God. Yeah. Yeah. I read an article this week that just Oh, oh, my daddy used to say, get up in my crawl. It just really just irritated me. And that article said, Sister Lynn, that 41% that of the Christians today believe that our God is the same God as the Muslim God. I read that article. I said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's no God like our God. There's no God like Jehovah. Jehovah Rapha, you're here. If you need a financial blessing, he'll be Jehovah 
forever. There's no other God like Jehovah. He's the beginning and the ending. He's the faithful. He's the true witness. He's the amen. He's the amen that took me in the ending. He'll be the last king standing. Hallelujah. He'll be the last man standing. Will you give the king the things of the Lord of life prayer? I'm going to write the editor of that note. I'm going to write him a little note from Crossroads. <laughs> you didn't come survey us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, you didn't come ask me about my opinion. Yeah. I'll give it to him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will be what you need him to be. And to understand his, this philosophy, to understand his sovereignty, uh, is to recognize that he knows everything. Isn't it, isn't it isn't amazing? And I've been there too. But isn't it amazing? We think we can hide things. <laughs> well, we think we can hide stuff. We can, oh, I'll just put that under here. Nobody will see. God knows. He knows, friend. He knows what you do in your room. I, I used to tell my kids all the time that don't that they don't have to worry about doing anything in secret because God knows and I'm close to God. You tell me. <laughs> they know, don't they? I, I hear from God, don't they? Oh. I, 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 I catch them doing something, Brother Tony, they come in their eyes, be all like, how did you know? I said, Yo, I do. <laughs>
wheelchair over here. They had told him that his cancer came back and then went into his bones. And now he's got how he's got bone cancer. And they've been all depressed. Uh, Pastor Jose, they've been all depressed and down because when you, somebody tells you you're not going to live, you kind of get a little down. And I'm here to tell you two Sundays ago, I spiritually, I saw my spiritual eyes. I saw the river flowing. And some of you decided you were going to come up and get a little wet in the river. And when you did, and when Brother Fred did, he, oh, he was sitting about right here. And Sister Jewel said she pushed him. And as they began to get into the river, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He said he felt his toes start getting wet. Oh, the 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about it. When's the last time you felt a stirring? If you be honest with yourself, that brings me to my second part, and I've got to go to be clear about yourself. In order for us to have a renewal of our spirit, we've got to be clear about who we are. Yes. Clear about yourself. Do you know this world we live in? People want you to be something you're not. Think about it. They want you to be something you're not. They want you to dress a certain way, act a certain way, say a certain phrase. Do all these things. Do you know what I've seen out of this culture? Very few people see themselves through a clear lens. Most of the problem or the difficulty when it arises, we even look for someone else to blame, don't we? <laughs> Come on now. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. Friend, we need to be clear about ourselves. Don't push the blame on someone else. I was at FedEx uh, Friday, I think. Uh, I think it was Friday or so, or it might have been yesterday or whatever it was. And, and we have a certain protocol to where if, if you have a package that is accidentally put on you that someone else is of another route, you're supposed to go through a protocol to get that route, that package to them. You go to your supervisor, they are to delete it and then scan it upon the other route so that it gets delivered. But I was in a hurry, and, and there was the other guy that was in a hurry, and, and I got to maybe my last two packages of load of my truck, and I grabbed that package, and I, I, I saw whose it was. I went over there, and I knew exactly the person who it was, and I knew exactly where he was going to take that package. And I said, hey, listen, you know, here's a package. I didn't really have time to go find whoever it was and did whatever they need to do because sometimes they're just slow like that. And we were in a hurry. I said, but you deliver that package. You scan it on you when you're out there and take care of it, and it shall be done. And it was done. But they had blown the horse. No, easy. And so but as, as I got toward about the end of mine, I saw my scanner. I had two or three that, was, that needed to be deleted. And I was like, man, I still got to go over there. And as I went over there, and I had to track this person down, and I finally found not the one I was looking for, but another supervisor. And man, he looked at me, and he said, he said, well, what's this? I said, well, it went to so-and-so. Well, why did he go to so-and-so? You're supposed to follow the protocol. And I looked at him, and I said, listen, I don't have an excuse. It, 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 this is what it is. I did it. Here it is. You know, I, I'm sorry. And he looked at me, and he says, you're the first person I've ever seen in this building that doesn't have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Friend, listen to me. Stop making excuses. Stop trying to blame someone else. Uh, uh, to, to, uh, a part of this reason that we see is a self-image issue. To admit that I made a mistake appears uh, to, to give a weakness of me, to make me ignorant of some kind. God forbid that we appear to be ignorant. Or God forbid that we appear to be to weak, friend. Uh, listen to me. Do you realize that God expects us to judge ourselves and to do so very severely? He expects you to examine yourself. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he said before you take communion, before you go on with the Lord, you better examine yourself. Amen. Every day I get up, I say, Lord, search me. When I go, when I go home to bed, I say, Lord, search me. Search me, Lord. Search me. I want to be pleasing to you. I need renewal in my life every day. Jesus said, I wish you were hot uh, uh, or cold, but not lukewarm. And so many times we forget that he knows all things, that he does not faint, that he does not grow weary. We cannot hide from him. And I often wonder, how does God feel about me? At the end of the day, when the rubber hits the road, how does God feel about you? <coughs> how does he, is he pleased with your life? Is he pleased with your actions? Friend, is he proud of you like a father should be proud of his children? I'm proud of my children. I brag of my children all the time. Hallelujah. I'm so proud of them. I, I tell them how, I tell people how they love Jesus, how they make good grades, how that they do what their mommy, their daddy says. Are they children? Sure, they're children. But is our Abba Father proud of us like he is a child, uh, uh, like he is his children? Friend, am I what God had in mind when he decided me? Am I going to live a life of blessings or curses? Do I act in the manner which honors him? Uh, when we stand before the Lord, let me tell you this, child of God, 
whether you are a child of God or whether you're not a child of God, you will stand before the Lord. Amen. Young people, you will stand before the Lord someday, and you're going to give accountability of all the things that you've done. Uh, old people, middle-aged people, every people, you will stand before the Lord someday, and you will give an account for, your, uh, for the things you've done. I pray that we are blood-covered. I yeah. pray that Jesus will cover us. Amen. Friend, uh, listen. Somebody told me one time that you're going to stand before him, whether it's through death or whether it's through the judgment, friend, we're going to stand before him. And will he give you a well done or will he give you a what might have been? Do you know that lukewarm Christians make God sick? They make him sick. They make him sick, friend. He, he said, because you're neither hot or neither, you're neither cold, he said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Jesus was very clear in describing these people. He expects us to be clear about how that we view ourselves, how we, how we describe ourselves, how we perceive ourselves. If renewal is going to come, we need to be clear about who we are. Amen. And number three, we need to be clear about who he is. Yeah. Who he is. Who he is. Hallelujah. Who is he in your life? We need to be clear about our Savior. As I was growing up, my goal in life was not to be a preacher. It was not. I'm just to be honest with you, it was not. My goal in life was to get as much money as I can. <laughs> that was my goal in life. My goal in life was gold, and silver, and wealth. I wanted a big, a big, a big farm, and, and I wanted a bunch of pine trees in the farm. And I was going to dig out a, a, a driveway, maybe a, a six, seven, eight, nine hundred feet back in the, the farm. Dig me out about an acre of land, be secluded way back in there where I don't have to deal with traffic. I don't have to deal with people. I don't have to deal with anybody. I didn't like people. <laughs> See what the Lord will do to you? <laughs> I had aspirations to be, to be rich, to, to have gold and silver. And it took me some time, but I realized that Jesus... Jesus, he had just as much as a goal for me that I had for myself, friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, listen, he wanted me to have those riches. He wants me to have that goal, but not the goal that I think of. He says that my goal is purged in the fires of the holy fire of God, a treasure that is refined from the fire of Calvary, amen, a treasure that is purified by the blood of the Lamb. It's been tried and tested, and it's true for us today. See, we need to be clear about our God. We need to be clear, friend, about what he offers us. And today he offers us renewal. As I'm closing, they that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed. Renewed. He said, if you will just, if you will just wait upon me. He said in, the, in Revelation, if you'll just open the door and you just wait. He said, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in and I'm going to sup with you and you with me. And so many times I find out this. Now let me have your attention. Right here. So many times, Pastor Jose, I find out that we don't want to open the door because if we let Jesus in, he's going to find out what's in our house. Lord, I don't want you right now to come in. I'm busy, Lord. I got things going on. I can see him now. Hello? Lord. No, I'm coming in right now. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I got to put some things aside. No, you don't see that, Lord. You don't see that. Lord, I don't want you to see the way I'm acting right now. You know, every time.
time you deny the Lord, you know what you do to him? You crucify him with all over again. Every time you tell him no, you crucify him all over again. Every time you tell him you don't have time for him, you crucify him all over again. You might as well take the hammer and the nail, put it in your head, and drive it through his because that's what you do. They that wait upon the Lord. Jesus offers renewal. If there is to be a spiritual renewal in your life, in my life, it starts with forgiveness. It starts with the heart. Listen to me, friend. I want you to hear me this morning. This is not from some, from some manual. This is from the book of God, from the Bible. Even some of you have held on to things for so long. You have held on to bitterness and unforgiveness for so long. And the Lord wants you to release it. Some of you have harbored those ill feelings for days and months, for years, friend, and you wonder why you don't feel the presence of the Lord anymore. Maybe you did something, or maybe somebody did do it to you. <coughs> maybe they did. Maybe you're having a hard time of forgiving and letting go, but the Lord wants to lift those weights, release you of those giants, bring renewal to your heart. But you've got to open the door and let him in. Start the renewal process. Will you stand to your feet this morning?